This is gonna be noisy. This might get annoying. I'm putting it down. Hi, I am so ready to talk about Steris. Out of everything I have read so far this year, Steris is one of my favorite characters. Probably my favorite. Steris really resonates with me. But first, spoiler warning, I'm talking about Steris from all four books of Mistborn Era 2, the Wax and Wayne series, so you'll want to have read those before watching this. I do have a video on Steris from the first two books, so if you haven't read the whole thing, you could go watch that one. Otherwise, let's dig in. Okay, so to me, two of the things that made the biggest impression on me about Steris were her courage, which she didn't even realize, <laughs> about herself and her self-image, especially in the third book. Because I already have a video of her from the first two books, I will try to talk more about how I felt about her in the second two. I was so happy that in Bands of Mourning, Steris got to go. If you did watch my first Steris video, that's one of the things that I thought was so sad, was that she really is into Wax and really supports him and his job and his, what, the hobby that a gentleman must have to be happy. She fully supports him. I think she kind of likes being engaged to the hero of the legends. She loves flying with him, but she always got left out. She got left behind, Wax stowed her somewhere safe, and she just had to sit at home and wonder what was going on. Not like her sister Marcy, who always gets to go be part of things. But in Bands of Mourning, even though she got to go with them on their mission, she was fully aware that she was just there for Wax's image. She wasn't really going to be helpful. In fact, she expected to be in the way. She knew that her being there would distract Wax. He was going to have to think about her and protect her. She's not a hero. She's not a lawman. She's never done the training that her sister has. She's not an allomancer. She feels like she brings nothing to the table. The scene where she's writing in her notebook and she's explaining to Marcy how she's rating each one of them as far as their usefulness. She's trying not to lie to herself. She's trying to just look at herself from an outside perspective on how useful she is. She knows she's not a zero, but she still put herself very, very low because it's so much easier to see all your own faults. And then looking at everybody else, it's so much easier to see what they do better than yourself. And I think some of that came into her rating system. I don't think she could be absolutely honest because she lives in her own body. <laughs> she is herself. She can't see herself completely clearly. And she is very aware of her own social anxiety, her social awkwardness. She knows as a lady, she's gonna have to go into these social situations and she knows she's not good at them. Or if she is good, it's because she has studied. <laughs> she has studied human interactions and she relies on social scripts. Interacting socially with other people doesn't come naturally. She has to work hard at it. So having that not come naturally and feeling anxious about it means that she prepares ahead of time. She writes down things to say and memorizes them. She plans who to talk to, what to say to each person, and that is like a tool for her. Going into a social situation armed, not the way Wax goes in armed, <laughs> No guns, but note cards. That doesn't lessen the social anxiety. It doesn't take it away, but she can go in with knowledge that she won't necessarily fail because if she gets stuck, she can pull out a card that she prepared ahead of time before she was in the social situation and that can help her out. And I have a feeling if you're the kind of person watching booktube, that means you're the kind of person who likes to read. And a lot of times the type of person who likes to read and get lost in books and care too much about characters is also going to be a type of person kind of like Steris who doesn't necessarily interact easily with other humans or other people. And so I think a lot of us can really relate to Steris. But let me tell you how I feel about Steris going into book four. Oh no, wait. Hang on, <laughs> end of book three. I love that Wax and Steris just 
suddenly got married at the end of the third book. There was no big prep. Steris didn't have time to really get everything ready. They just went and got married really fast. Sometimes for someone with social anxiety, getting thrown into something is better because then you don't have the anticipatory anxiety, pre-anxiety before the real anxiety. <sighs> just gonna put on my fancy anxiety for the party. Anyway, I love the relationship between Steris and Wax. I really love it. I love how Wax comes to really appreciate her. He gets to know her as a person, not awkward Steris who doesn't know how to talk to people. He makes her feel safe with him. She can be herself with him. He doesn't judge her or think she's weird for making lists and preparing for things that should be easy, like a dinner with friends. And by book four, he starts to rely on her. I love that she just has everything prepared that he might need. When it was just Steris alone, and she was the only one she had to prep for, maybe sometimes she felt like she was just doing it because now it's a habit. She just does it out of nervousness. But now she has a husband who really benefits from all her preparedness. She can just lean into it and he can say, thank you, Steris having extra copies of everything he would need, putting extra things in his pockets. It's so cute. It's her way of showing love and support to him because that's the type of person she is. So the things that she does for herself to prepare for something, she also does for the man she loves to help him prepare for something. And I cannot imagine, yes I can, I can imagine it quite well <laughs> because I have two children. In book four, Wax and Steris have two children, and already being a person with anxiety, adding in two more little people into your life to feel anxious about, that was not dug into at all in the story, and I kind of wish it was. Because Steris as a mom, in modern day, Steris would be the mom with the backpack that has everything in it, like the Mary Poppins bag. She would have the snacks and the drinks and the sunscreen and the band-aids and the hand sanitizer and, I don't know, tweezers, nail clippers, hair ties, any little thing that you're prepared to go out into the world with your children, she would have. And I would have enjoyed reading about her as a mom a little more. I know these books weren't necessarily written purposely for the female audience, but I would have liked to see a little bit more of that side of her. Now the story wasn't really about the kids. I did enjoy seeing the relationship between Max and Wax. Wax and Max. Waxilium and Maxilium. I thought their father-son relationship was cute. I liked that. And Steris, oh man, the worrywart, always preparing for everything. She knows that Wax is going to go flying with his children, so she, what, is she the one who invented it? Or at least she caused to be invented the harness that Wax can wear to take her oldest son while they go flying through the city? She knows she's not gonna stop it from happening, so she makes it as safe as possible. <laughs> I love that. I'm ready for more coffee. It's still gonna be shaky. But then, disaster is imminent, and the world needed a person like Steris. A person, you know, I knew I was gonna get emotional when I talked about this part. <laughs> I tried not to get pre-emotional, I was just gonna start talking. I'm not going to actually cry. That might be a lie. The city of Elendel is facing a crisis. A bomb is coming. It's an emergency. Steris is the queen of preparedness. She has notebooks full of plans. She is the one who can save the city. She just has to put herself out there, get herself into a group of people, speak up for herself, say, I know what to do, you all need to do this. If you have social anxiety, that is like facing a giant or a monster, facing your worst fears. But you know what Steris does on a daily basis for her whole life? She faces her fears. And I am going to say that Steris is probably the bravest person in the book because she is the one that lives with anxiety every single day. Anxiety is like a fancy word for being afraid. It's fear, but it's like a constant everyday kind of thing. It's her daily battle. The thing she has had to learn to deal with so often in every decision she makes that when the time comes and the city needs heroes and they need somebody to be brave, she's had the most practice. <laughs> she is more brave than the other people 
who don't have to face fears every single day like she does. In her life, she has gotten very good at doing things even though she's afraid to do them. She's always afraid of going into a room and talking to people. So when it comes time to go into a room and talk to the city's leaders, she can do that. She's practiced doing that. She's kind of forced to come to the realization that all this time thinking that something was wrong with her, you know? She doesn't know anybody else who fills notebooks with everything that could possibly go wrong and what to do in those situations. That's kind of a weird thing to do. Most people don't do that. And so she would look at herself and think, well, why do I do that? I must be weird. But that thing about herself that seems weird and odd because nobody else does it is now like a superpower. Governor Varlance. While having been a previous military man, didn't have to go in and face emergencies on a daily basis. He's not used to having to be prepared for any eventuality. He sees Steris and what Steris has done and thinks that she is amazing. Governor Varlance was ready to run. He was going to flee the city. He was going to give in to his fears and leave. The only reason he didn't was because of Steris the one who lives in fear every day, the one who lives in anxiety constantly. When the time came, when the emergency happened, Steris was the solid one that the governor himself could rely on. And he would have stayed till the end. He did stay till the end. He stayed until Steris said, okay, let's get out of here. <sighs> she has come such a long way. She has grown so much and become such a strong woman. And because she's the type of person she is trying to look at things honestly, not like, I deserve to serve the governor. She does think that she could be offered a Deathwind's job, however you say that, the vice governor. The vice governor's job is gonna be open and the governor really liked Steris and really counted on her. <laughs> but Steris does not want the pressure of being the vice governor. But when the governor offers her the job of like, I don't remember what he called it, disaster preparedness. Think of anything bad that could happen, drop some plans, and then we are going to use those. That's like telling Steris you know that thing about yourself that you thought was weird and unnecessary? It's the most necessary thing in our city right now. It is the thing that sets her apart, but instead of in a bad way, in a good way. The whole city can rely on her and her wonderful brain <laughs> that can think of everything bad. <laughs> but then, turn everything bad into something that works. If I forgot anything or think of anything else I wanted to say about her, I'll pin it in a comment. Thanks for being here. Go watch my video on Wayne if you haven't yet, and I'll see you next time. Bye.